after your uh, basic training, uh, I imagine it was with uh, BT-13s, BT-15s. You went to the AT-6 oh, yeah. Texan yeah. for your mm -hmm. advanced training. Yeah, I guess I only think of B-17s nowadays. <laughs> yes. Uh, where did you do your basic again? Shepherdfield, Texas. Shepherdfield, Texas. Mm -hmm. And then you went overseas right away? No. Um, I was shipped for uh, radio school to, and I forgot that before, but I was shipped to uh, Chanute Field in Illinois, mm -hmm. where we learned code and had to type code, things like that, and then gunnery. But that was in Texas, too. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after all of your basic training, did, did you go overseas right away? No, because I got hurt. <laughs> I had both legs broken, and I spent uh, about five months in the hospital, and then I went. Was that a flying accident? No. Oh. No, it was a jackass that was drunk that hit me with a car. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my. OK, then you went overseas to uh, England. Mm -hmm. uh, no, to France first, oh, to and then France, to England. And then to England. And then you were assigned to which uh, bomb group? 365th, 305th Bomb Group, 365th Bomb Squadron. Squadron. Mm -hmm. OK, was that 1st Division, 2nd Division, do you know? What does that mean? I oh, all right. That's OK. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then you were assigned to uh, a crew, I imagine. Yes. All right. And uh, your commanding officer, was he the, who was he in? Uh, his name was Tyson, John A. Tyson. Mm -hmm. And then your uh, crew, uh, which plane were you assigned to at the beginning? Marianne. Marianne, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, tell me about your first mission. Well, <laughs> it's hours of boredom. And then a lot of activity. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we dumped the bombs uh, and we went home. Mm -hmm. uh, it was frightening because it was the first one, but it wasn't a bad situation at all. Did you encounter fighters? No. Flak? Yes, flak. No mm -hmm. fighters. No fighters. I don't think they were expecting us to hit something that unimportant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, when you did have uh, uh, other missions, did you have fighter escort? Yes. And if so, uh, well, what did you have as escort? Some. Uh, when we were first, we first went, uh, we had fighters like, uh, well, the P-38 Lightning, um, some others, I can't, uh, maybe the P-40s, you know, they were old. And P-47 Thunderbolts? Uh, we, I don't know if we had the 47s, but I know we had the 40s. They were old junk, you know. Oh, sure. Um, but they couldn't stay with us. You know, they, they, their fuel capacity wasn't enough. So uh, we got slapped around a little. Um, and then the P-51 came out. Was this about in the middle of your uh, total missions that the uh, Muslim yeah. came See, in? Yeah, I only had 12. 12 yeah. combat missions. Mm -hmm. And about the sixth or seventh mission, you had Mustang escort. I'm going to guess that. I don't know which right. number, you know. And did you all notice the difference right away? Oh. Uh, you know, you thank God for a lot of things. Uh, we thank God for the P-51. It could go the whole length with us, and instead of being sitting there as ducks for the German fighter pilots, now the German fighter pilots had a problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which did you uh, bomber crews fear most, the fighters or the flak? The fighters, yeah. The, the fighters were much more effective than the flak. Mm -hmm. The flak blows up, but the fighter is after you. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Did you have any uh, of your crew injured? Uh, we had one small injury. One of the waste guns uh, got a, <laughs> a piece of, uh, you know, the flak is made like chocolate bars. And when it blows up, it breaks those into a thousand pieces. And a whole chocolate bar landed on his suit, burned right through to his arm. Ooh. Sounds silly, but it was a bad burn. Right. Mm -hmm. Was he able to fly after that? Oh, yeah, he got fixed up. Got fixed up right away. Yeah. Uh, out of all of your 12 missions, uh, do, does any one stand out in yeah. particular? Yes. Could you tell us about that? Well, that was Blue Esty. Uh, terrible. Uh, I guess there was fighters, there was flak, but most important is the airplanes were going down like, you know, they were really going down because Blue Esty was so important. You know, it was the supply of oil for Hitler, you know, and that's why we were hitting it. I know that other units came up too and hit it. You know. Were there bomb, uh, B-24s along with your B-17s? Yes. Were they above you or below you? Do you remember? Uh, I don't think that there was much of a difference. Oh. Um, I know we were a mass of airplanes, uh, but they went down. A lot of them went down. It was a terrible mess, you know, and you keep wondering, are, are we next? 
Did you fly the high altitude or low altitude high, missions of Pluestic? High altitude. Not at Pluestic. We dropped way down. That was the idea, was to hit it at low altitude. I see. Uh, did you find that uh, the mission was successful, uh, some of those Pluestic missions for you? Let's say successful to the extent that we made things blow up, but we never stopped Pluestic completely. Now, the missions to Ploeste, you said they were high altitude. Uh, did you have fighter escort for the Ploeste missions? Yes. Do you remember what kind of fighters you had? I think probably mostly 51s, because the 51 replaced everything. Right. Uh, the the P-38s was still in, in service, you know, but it couldn't, it didn't have the range. Didn't have the range, okay. Uh, now, uh, when you came back from this Ploeste mission, how many uh, airplanes did not come back with you. Did, did you feel the loss? I don't know the back? number, but I think the number was something like 87% loss. They wiped wiped us out. And then you had to go back? On a, a second mission. Yeah, you yes. went on a second mission. We didn't mission. go back the same day. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but you went back to Proesti? Uh, uh, once. Once. And then that, for some reason, they, they said no more Proesti. Uh, and we didn't go again. All right. <clears throat> okay, uh, now, where are you now, and what did you do today? <laughs> I'm right at Tucson's airport, and I did the most marvelous thing I've done, I guess, maybe in my life. Um, what is I, that? I told him I had 12 missions 57 years ago, and now I just had my 13th. What did you fly in? The, this guy. And these two, my friends, my daughter, they did, I didn't have one indication from them. They didn't make one slip. I came out here and I thought, God, they're going to show me a 17, wonderful. I had no idea we were going to go. Did you go right to the radio room? Well, you have to crawl, you know, on my legs. But I got there and I sat down in the chair. What kind of feelings did you have flying again in a B-17? Acceler acceleration, but also, uh, I don't know, a twinge of nostalgia. I don't know. I can't even explain it, but it was thrilling the whole time. You know, yes. even dragging myself around. I told them, God, when I was 18, I'd run down that catwalk. <laughs> now I can barely move through it. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit with your daughter and your friend here. Okay. And we'll get them into the picture here, okay? That sounds good. <laughs> my friend Bill, my daughter Chrissy, <laughs> that I love very much. And me. That's right. That's the third one. <laughs> um, they... Conned, it, conned me today completely, and I never got one indication that uh, we were going to do this today. And it was the nicest thing they ever did. <laughs> it's hard to fool him, and we did it. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to thank somebody that flew one of these planes and what they did for our country and the world. And it's just, I had the opportunity, and it's even better that it just happened to be Chris's father. I want to thank both of you. Thank you for bringing us to this today, and thank you for everything. And I had no idea what you did up there until today. Oh, is that right? Yes. And you know, Bill, I told you there are no words uh, to, that I can use that to, would be adequate to thank you for this today. It's just wonderful. Well, you're welcome. Want <laughs> <laughs> to tell that story? Oh, uh, Bill insisted I tell a story that happened during World War II. There was a P-38 Lightning uh, being ch chased by a Focke Wolf 190. Behind that was a uh, P-51, and behind that was an ME-109. And they all roared through the squadron at the same time. The P-38 Lightning pilot picked up the radio and said, look to Lockheed for leadership. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't even know if that's true, but it's a great story. <laughs>
right. Knock it off. Watch him. Watch him. He's moving around. Break me out at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Coming in straight ahead. Come, come. Not a clock, Mark. Coming in on your 